hello, hello. Let me know if you're here. Let me know where you're connecting from. Let me know how you are. Today, I am super excited because what I'm going to talk about today is actually a, a mini training I did on Wednesday inside a group of uh, wonderful ladies, by the way. Uh, today, I'm actually going to talk about the elements, the 10 elements that you need on your sales page. So whatever it is that you're selling and you're building your own sales page, which sometimes we might call it landing page as well. Um, it could be a service, it could be a product, whatever that is. Um, the, the strategy behind it is very similar. So I actually want to talk about that today and this is going to be a good one too. So we have 10 elements today. So again, my name is Sibila. I welcome you to this video. If you're watching the replay and you wanna make comments, go ahead and drop them um, below. If you're watching live, welcome. Let's interact. Let me know where you're coming from, where you, you're connecting from, and if you're excited about this one. So anyways, okay, let's start. So uh, before you create any type of a landing page or as a matter of fact, any page for your website or any page online, you definitely need to have a goal. So, and your goal needs to be clear. So whatever page you build, um, you have to have a goal for that page. So for example, if um, you're building your a landing page for people to come in and download a free resource, for example, that's your goal. Your goal is lead generation. You want to generate a lead from that page. Um, now, for with a sales page, which, like I said, some people also just call it a landing page, but it's a very specific landing page. It's uh, the goal is basically to make a sale. So, um, of course, you know you you the people that arrive on your sales page probably already know you, probably have some kind of an, have had some kind of an engagement with you and your brand. So that's how they arrive at your sales page. So the first thing I want to um, talk about is how people get to that page. So before we get to this, uh, to all of the elements, I actually want to show you, I, I moved my things around here on my screen, but <laughs> I wanna make sure that I get to the right. I wanna show you something here. I wanna show you how a funnel looks um, when, you're, um, when you're building your page, whatever landing page that is. For people to get to that page, to get to that sales page in this case, they need to come from somewhere. So they can come from uh, Facebook, from Twitter, Instagram, Google, any kind of a social media actually. Um, a, an email marketing that you did, some kind of an email you sent. Um, they also come, they might also, which is not there, but they might also come even from your own, another page from your own website or another page or a page for, or a link from someone else, like an affiliate. I mean, there's several ways for people to get to that page and there is always a goal for that page. So this is what we call a funnel. So this is a very simple funnel I'm showing you. It's basically the top of the funnel is how people find, uh, find out about you and your services and your product and that page specifically. Your landing page, which, was, which is what we're gonna talk about, your sales page, and the conversion of that page. So like I said, we're gonna be talking today about sales page and the conversion is basically uh, to turning, to turn that audience, the visitors to your page into buyers. Now a regular, not a regular, but another type of a landing page, like I said, is a lead generation landing page, which the goal is to generate leads. But today I'm actually just gonna talk about sales page, but even if you're, even if you're right now like putting together a landing page or you're using some kind of a template, sometimes a lot of people actually like to use templates, they prefer to use a template. The, what I'm gonna talk about, these 10 elements is our is are <laughs> they are actually part of a strategy so that you can convert these people whatever it is even for us to convert them into leads or to convert them into sales those are the strategies that we that we should use on the page so i wanted to show you that so um let's talk about let me go back here to dark to camera okay so let's first talk about the headline that's your number one so number one the headline that is the most important sentence on your entire page. Uh, it could be, some people call it a hero. I actually call it a hero most of the time, but every hero has a headline. So here it could be like a picture, an image of some kind. It could be an image of you. It could be an image of the product, of the service, of a lifestyle image. It could be anything. It could even just be a 
a flat color or some kind of a solid color um, background. It doesn't really have to be an image. But that, the headline is the most important sentence on your entire page. That headline needs to speak directly to your audience. I like to call this like a benefit-driven headline, which is, um, it's, a, it's a headline that's actually talking about the benefits of your product, be it a service, be it a product. I'm gonna be talking about products and services, but the, the sales page is basically for both. Um, and you need to be very clear, and it needs to be very easy to understand. So we're not gonna be clever, we're not gonna be funny or cute, we're definitely gonna be straight, clear, and direct. Okay, so that's your, that's number one. Uh, number two, the second element on your page. Um, actually, before we go there, before we go to number two, let me go back. I actually want to show you, share with you an example of a headline. There you go. Okay, because I did. I took some examples out of the internet for you. So this is a good headline. This is a good benefit-driven headline. We're going back to number one. Good fit that fits into your life. Now, this is from the Daily Harvest um, brand. If you're not familiar with it, they um, they actually sell these little cups with basically full meals or sometimes it's fruit, sometimes it's soup. They have a lot of things in there. You, you can go check out it. They're pretty cool. But what I like about the headline is that they're talking about the benefits. So the benefit of you buying their product is it fits into your life and it's a good food that fits into your type of a life, into your lifestyle. So that's that's what I would call like a benefit driven headline. That's a great one. Okay, so back to back to what I was talking about. Okay, so number two. So number two is um, the frustrations. <laughs> the frustrations is you're going to be talking about your customers or your audience main frustrations. So for that, you can tell a relatable story, some kind of a story that they can relate to. What you want to do in this section, in this part of your of your sales page, is you want them, you want to see your your audience like literally nodding their head and saying, "Yes, that's exactly how I feel. That's that's exactly my frustration." So, you, and you need to show them. You need to show the empathy. You need to show them that you understand their frustrations and and. You need to show them that you're there, that you like literally that you're relatable. So you definitely want to see them literally nodding their head. So same thing on this one. You want to keep it clear. You want to keep it simple and you want to keep it to the point. We're not going to go all over the place. We're going to be direct about their frustrations. After that, so num this is number two. So number three is um, vision. Now, the vision is what you're doing is you're showing them what it could look like. If they didn't have that type of a frustration, basically if they purchased your product or your service. So you're going to show them the future. You're going to create a vision of a better future for them or and show them how it can look like. Um, and what I like to say is sometimes is you, you want to play if you know to try to get to like a nice headline or something that could you know trigger some of uh, some ideas is use the phrase imagine if. Um, or what if, you know, this is it, try to get them to see what it will look like once they purchase your product. That's basically what it is. So that's number three. It's a vision. Um, actually when I, I have, um, I have an example of, uh, of a good one here for a vision. Let me get to it here. This one, let me sh put this one back here. So this is a good example of vision. So, and I just want to show you the headline basically. The headline says, but what if you could? So that's the vision. So it's, and it's in bullet points, it's showing what could you do? What could have happened or what could be happening um, once you purchase their product? Of course, you're not going to talk about your product yet. You're just going to talk about that possible future. Um, okay, so number three, it's the solution. So once you talk about the frustration, you're showing them what the future could look like and then you're showing them the solution you're showing them your product this is the time where you're going to share the solution to their frustrations you're going to list benefits and features of your service or your product and i like to say that you should actually focus on the benefits first and then the features sometimes we get to we we tend to focus a lot on the features of our products. Oh, you know, for example, if you're selling um, a physical product, um, 
if you're selling earrings, oh, the earring is this size, it's this color, it's, you, th these are the features. So what consists of, of that product? If you're selling a digital service, for example, I mean, a digital product, uh, let's say you're selling a, um, a book, you, you're talking about, actually, there's not a lot of features that we could talk in a book, but uh, like a digital course, for example. So you could talk, you're going to be talking about the modules or what they're going to learn and all of that. So th these are the features service is the same thing what they get from your from your service but what you want to do what you the, the thing that you want to focus more on is, are on benefits so what are the benefits of actually purchasing uh, of that product so that's what you want to do of course you definitely want to talk about both the, the benefits and the features but try to put the benefits before so like in that order benefits first and then features of that product and in this part of the of the page you definitely want to be as detailed as necessary it really depends on your product or your service whatever it is that you're selling uh, but try to be as detailed as as, as possible um, you know show them what they get show them you know if you're if it's a, if it's kind of some kind of a digital product if they're going to learn anything from it you know show them what's included so that's that's a section on your sales page that you definitely want to be very specific on your product and again before that the benefits of your product um i see hi carolina carolina is asking uh she says did you recommend work websites with templates uh sometimes actually i it's i don't want to say i recommend with templates you might want to start from scratch your own sales page but most of the time we use uh, some people use lead pages for example or some other services that do provide sales page or landing page um templates sometimes you might purchase some kind of a, a theme or or yeah theme or template for your website and some of some of these packages might include a sales page might include a landing page but on not all of them have these um these elements so that's why i mentioned you know about purchasing the template you can actually just start from scratch and and just pick up sections and it's really up to you how you're building it but the most important part is is for your sales page to contain those 10 elements so i hope i answered your question okay so number five is the offer okay so we get confused sometimes because you know the solution but isn't this isn't the offer the solution the offer is actually the price you're going to show them the how much it is you're going to um that's your that's your cta so if you don't know what cta is it stands for call to action this is the section of your page where you're actually going to tell your audience what to do so you're interested you want to buy it you want to purchase it this is where they're going to convert so this is a very important, very, very important uh, section of the page. Just like I said, the headline was the most important um, sentence of your, of your sales page. This is the most important section of your sales page. It should um, try to make it as, I don't wanna say shiny, but try to make it stand out as much as possible. More like think about this is where, if they're just scrolling through your page, if it's a long page and they're just scrolling through it, Make sure that this section is a section that could kind of like jump out at them and it would make your audience kind of stop in that section. And this is the only place where you're going to have a link to anything else to, in this case, to your shopping cart or to a cart where they're going to purchase it. So uh, again, so here you're going to display your offer, meaning the price. If you do have optional prices, if you it depends on how what you're selling but for example if you have a digital product that you're selling and then you're adding some kind of a bonus to it or some kind of a package to it if they just want to sell they just want to purchase that specific product but then you have a bundle it might it again it's all the options that you have with that with your product it could be just one just one product or you could be selling for example one earring or like a bundle of three three earrings for example so those those that's where you put your offer that's where you put all the options for your offer um and you definitely want to uh, be as detailed as possible on that on the price how how it's paid and you know, if there are any payment options or you know all of the pro possible details you might have from your offer and with this this is the only actually no there's one more section this is one of the sections that you definitely want to repeat if your page is long so if you have a short sales page it's fine just having it once but if you have a longer page meaning like I'd say uh, it's hard to say like how many scrolls but you know like you probably can tell if it's a long page or not but if you do have a long page 
you definitely want to repeat this this section. So you might want to repeat it a second time or maybe or maybe even a third time. So there are sales pages that are super long and then the, you know these offers are repeated I'd say maybe five even six times sometimes. But I think the you know what I've seen and what I'm used to mostly even if when I build it for my own clients and when I see it with my own uh, students doing it it's basically like I'd say once or twice you can actually repeat the offer. So I have an, I have an example of of an offer section and the offer here's here's this is the offer section. Um, this is for the ask method. I'm not sure if you guys, if you're all familiar with it, but his name is Ryan Levesque. He does uh, he sells this the a program on this. Um, but what I want to show you is that this is the offer, the price, he, and he's got an option. He's got a one payment option and a six payment option, and he talks about what you're going to get once you buy this. So he includes. He includes a lot of uh, details on your on the offer so that's a good example for an offer again you can just have the price it all depends on the type of product you have um, okay so number six so this is the sixth one the sixth section of your website you definitely want to place to have a, a guarantee section now this the section is more to like it's we, we place it there more to ease your buyers anxiety I say and to provide them with this type of information, especially if it's a big ticket item. So for example, the, 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 the example I showed before, it was a $2,000 um, product that he was selling. Definitely a big ticket item. You definitely want to have a, a guarantee. Now, you, do, you, you might ask me, but what if I don't have any? But what if I have a no returns you know, policy? If I'm just selling, like I said, a pair of earrings and there's no return, or if I'm just selling um, an ebook and there's no re there's no return, you still need to address it. It still needs to be said. You're giving you're giving your 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 possible buyer the information, literally to to like I said to to ease their anxiety on on spending whatever amount of money they're gonna be spending on your on your product. Um, okay, so number seven. Number seven is uh, is a good one because this one I, I have two options for this one. Number seven, the seventh element on your on your sales page, is the testimonial section. So the testimonial section is it again. It all depends on how big your sales page is, but there's two things I want you to do. I don't want you to use carousels. So I don't want to see like scrolling, you know, testimonials. Definitely don't use that. You definitely want your testimonials to be static, meaning like. People don't have to wait to read them, to wait to see, you know, which one they're, you know, it's more relatable to their own situation. So never use that. So if you have three or four testimonials you want to show, you can definitely have them all in one section, but you can also sprinkle these testimonials within your sales page. Now, it all depends on what type of testimonials it is. So for example, if someone is talking about a specific benefit of your, of your product, you might want to put that testimonial on the benefits section. If someone is talking about um, a specific feature of your product, you might want to put that testimonial near the near where you're listing the features of your product. So you might want to just sprinkle your testimonials throughout your page. So again, there's a section for a testimonial if you want to, and you can also sprinkle sprinkle them around the page. Again, it all depends on, on how big your page is, how long uh, uh, your sales page is, but that's a good one that I kind of like say, you know, there's a section for it, but you can also just spread it out and put it ev uh, in all different places. I do have an example of a section here. I see Maru. Hello, Maru. How are you? Um, okay. So the one I have here is this one. This is a good um, example. I actually have two examples. When we say this, is, I forgot to actually mention this. When I say testimonials, it doesn't it doesn't just have to be testimonials. You can have case studies. You can have videos of testimonials. You can have um, clients, uh, or for example, uh, logos of clients that you that you that you have that have something to say. It, it, it could be a lot of things. So this one I, I want to show you because this is this is a good example because this one lists four case studies. And on one side, on one of one of the one of the examples, and on the right right side, it's all about videos. Now, this is good because I actually I picked this this example specific for that because sometimes we just post a video, 
and we assume that people are going to click on the video to watch the testimonial, but not everybody does that. So you definitely want to have one of short, possibly, you know, shorter as possible, um, quote from that person under the video. So if you see here, you see the quote here, very, very small. Do you see like, it's like one, literally like four or five word quote. This one is a little bit bigger, but you definitely want to do that because some people might not want to click on every video and watch them. They might just want to see the quote. So you definitely want to do that. That's important to keep that in mind. Um, okay. So next one, so that was number seven. So number eight, we're almost getting there. So number eight is the introduction. So who is this person behind the brand? That would be you if you're a personal brand, or that could be your own business if there's if this is not a personal brand. So the introduction is you're introducing yourself or you're introducing your business. Uh, you're going to tell them how, how you or your business got to where they are now. This is basically what you're gonna do. And you're going to show them why you're qualified to provide that service or that product to them. Make sure that you include a picture of you if it's a personal brand, definitely a picture of you. And if possible, try to have a picture of you looking at the camera. There's a psychology behind this. Um, it's very important people do um, relate more to of course pictures of humans that's that's something that we all know humans dogs and babies of well, babies are humans but you know what i mean <laughs> dogs cats animals whatever uh but but people relate more to pictures of of humans and if they're looking straight at the camera especially if if the text or the copy next to it is related to that is a perfect way to uh connect and have people literally connect and engage with that um with that picture and that copy so when you if it's a personal brand make sure they use your own your own image and if you're looking at the camera straight up at the camera even better um and if it's a business if it's not your if it's not a personal brand you don't want to just show you um, you can show a picture of, of the team, a picture of the team working or, you know, whatever it is that the business does. You might want to do that. So for, back to the pair of earrings example, uh, you might just want to show a pair of hands, you know, uh, creating the, the earring. You might want to do that. So again, that's number eight. That's introduction. And we're going for number nine. So number nine is you're going to is about your audience. You're actually going to filter the audience. You're literally going to tell who is good for this and who is not. So who is this for? Who is this service or product you're selling? Who is this for? And who is it not for? So this section here, you're literally filtering out the ones that are not buyers. And you're you're helping the whole like part of <laughs> the returns, I'd say. People that want to have some kind of refund, want to return the product. So you definitely want to have that. So that's, I call it just the audience, but it's basically you're filtering the audience there. You're literally using, uh, this is for you if you're this, this, and this. This is not for you if this, and this, and this. Definitely this section is important. Now, section number 10, last one, very important one. Uh, it's your frequently asked questions questions. So for this one, this section, you're going to use it to answer all of the possible questions, or I'd say the most, you know, the most frequent questions you have about that product or service. And you might also want to uh, address the objections that people might have to, uh, after viewing that offer, after viewing, you know, the whole page. So a, a lot of people sometimes might just not put it there, but this actually helps you a lot. It helps, it helps, I don't want, you know, while the, the section before that, you're filtering the people, the section after that, which is FAQ, you're literally uh, addressing their objections and you're telling them, you know, you, you're answering their questions and you're avoiding, you know, more questions into your email or more chat questions or DMs that you're just gonna be answering over and over again, you know, simple things. So that's it, guys. These are the 10, 10 elements of your homepage. So uh, on your homepage, of your sales page. So I'm going to name them real quick again. I have them here, so I have to go back to the beginning here. Uh, so number one, headline. Number two, your the frustrations of your of your audience. Number three, 
the vision. You're going to show them the, the future, what it will look like. Number four, the solution. You're going to show them your product and your service. You're going to talk about it. Number five, the offer, which is your call to action, the price. That's where they're going to click. And number six, the guarantee. Number seven, the testimonials. Number eight, an introduction of the person or the business behind the services or products. Number nine, the audience, meaning like you're going to filter your audience. And number 10, the, the frequently asked questions, the FAQs. So I hope, I really, 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 really hope you enjoy this. If you are putting together your sales page, this is an awesome way to do it. This is a great blueprint. Go ahead and let me know if you are, if you're putting together a sales page, if you're planning to do it, if you've done it before, if this helped you, I would love to hear from you. Drop a comment in the, in the, in the, bot, in, in the comment section, a question, whatever it is. And I hope I can see you again next week. Now, take care, everyone. Have a great weekend. Bye-bye.